Right, so today I'm going to be aiming to turn this nice area here into something that looks just a little bit better. I figure that I can't really make it look much worse, so I've got nothing to lose by having a go. And if it doesn't work, then I guess I'll just have to have it done professionally at some point. But it's worth a go for the practice. This isn't a high-end car and it's not a high-end project. So as long as it's, it's not in a visible place either, it's right down here. So as long as it looks you know, a little bit better, then I'll be satisfied. First, you want to make sure your work area is clean and tidy. So, yep, good enough. And then uh, I'll show you what parts and what things I've got to do this Obviously, way. I've got the paint that I had mixed. Bondo. Sandpaper. The old uh, spinny wheel and uh, sorted discs. And all the uh, petrol. That's nothing to do with it. Oh, that one's full. Go over there. Some of the old K rust and uh, tape. And some assorted uh, junk for masking. I wonder what they're doing over there. Cutting all the trees down, maybe? And of course, some uh, white spirity stuff, and that should be plenty. And it's dirty, that's perfect. So obviously when I'm gonna be cutting into this, I don't wanna cut into this door, because this door's good, so I want to leave that alone. So when is a door not a door? When it's a jar. Obviously, also, I need to find some way of not getting paint all inside the car, because that won't be very good, and some way just to cover the wheel up. I think I might just rise the car up a bit, so this is a bit more a safe working height. I don't strain my old back muscles too much whilst I'm doing it. What's that on there? Oh, maybe I need to clean this beforehand. It's just some dirt from the last time it was driven. Safe, but steaming up. Plenty of these lying around since obviously uh, that thing that's been going around. Let me go to this, this ain't doing anything, is it? Well, I wasn't enjoying the death wheel, it was spinning too quick and just doing more than I wanted it to initially. So I've switched to some aluminium paper and I'm going to go at it this there's obviously some loose paint here that just needs to come off might be some pretty aggressive filler from when it was prepared last time and so not that clean metal underneath Nope. Probably should still have the mask on. I can smell the fiberglass, so it's probably better to have the mask on for this. Get my jack nice and dusty. I might want to just cover that up as well. Let's cover that up. You know, some of the most useful tools I've got is this bit of old foam. Everyone needs a bit of old foam in the garage. I'll tell you that for sure. So I'm just going to pick it off with a screwdriver, I think. This feels quite violent, and I have to remember it's just filler. Hmm. That's uh, mostly bad metal, so that's fine. Where do you stop with this kind of thing? This is starting to get kind of solid-ish here. I probably might switch back to the sandpaper at this point. I don't want to go mental here and make it really difficult to patch up again. There's obviously some shaping to do here. Oh look, I can see shiny metal. We're getting a little bit of some light. I think there's not much left of this. And I might end up building this up with quite a bit of filler, because I can't weld. As you can tell, I can't even do this properly. 
perfectionist. I'm not aiming for perfection here. I just want it to be smooth. And it's apart from that enormous hole, I'm not cutting my fingers on it. So I'm getting somewhere. I don't go too mad, but I just want to get rid of the loose. Loose rubbish. These jags know how to rust. <laughs> Getting the interior there, it's not ideal. Probably the back of the seat. Maybe not as far as that. But it's got you know, carpet, sound deadening, something back there. Something spongy like sound insulation. That ain't good, probably. Well done, you've made it to the future. And uh, this is where I'm at so far. You can see there's, there's some filler in there. That's, this has been done before, definitely. About a thousand times, I'm sure. Um, and there's a bit of a hole in there. I might spray some, uh, some sort of uh, rust preventative wax stuff in there, some cavity wax, maybe. But um, yeah, this is where it's at so far. And I think I'm gonna soak it down with a couple of different things. I've got this metal prep this pour 15 which promises to remove surface rust and it's reusable this is quite good stuff and if that doesn't work i've also got the british version the hammerite k rust which converts rust it doesn't say what it converts it to but it converts rust to something i've always used this in the past so i'm going to stick a bit of this on first just to uh, hopefully just convert this rust a bit we'll get some in there as well and then i'm just going to wait a number of hours and see if it turns black it's already starting to turn blacker so i'm gonna wipe it down and see what happens this just reminds me of them uh yakots i'm assuming not supposed to drink it but yeah it's definitely not yakot i can tell you that for sure i'm just going to put a bit of this on here as well and see if that does anything and the Pour 15 seems to be, I mean, it's gone black, which is, you know, is always the sign that it's converting the rust. So it's a good sign. It's going well. That's really as far as I dare go, because I think if I go any deeper into here, there's going to be no arch left. So I'm going to leave it at that stage. I'm going to leave it at least, probably overnight, just to convert the rust. Come back in the morning, fill this, start prepping it for paint, and well, primer and paint. It'll take me a few days, but to you, it will seem like only a few minutes. We'll see how it goes anyway. Just been out to get some important supplies for the day ahead, uh, obviously. Bacon roll. And I remembered the white spirit. What I think is interesting about this uh, rust proofing stuff is, they're using a picture of a Tesla on the back which I think are not known for going particularly rusty, being aluminium, I think, and bits of carbon and all sorts of stuff. I don't think they're made from old British steel, that's for sure, but either way, should do the job. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with the results so far. I'm just gonna try out this cavity wax on a bit of cardboard first to see what it's like, and uh, we'll go from there. Oh, it's not got a, oh, it's got a, yeah, it has, it's got a straw with it, so I can help, I help get it a bit further in, and an attachment, so I know what it's like. It's not quite what I was hoping for, but it should do the job. So I'll jam that up in here, give it a good spray. And try and fill this area. Pretty much until it kind of leaks out. Really get it in there. should do I'm just gonna wipe that off with a bit of white spirit I might do a little bit more K rust metal prep stuff just to make sure and in an hour or so I'll fill it 
Right, so time for the filler. Just using some of whatever this is. Bodywork filler. It's impossible to deal with. I might need two hands for this. Yep, get in somewhere. Smells delicious. Now I don't think I need a whole lot of this, but I have got a hole, so I might actually grab some fiberglass. I've just got some fiberglass. And I'm going to basically just tear it up a bit to try and mix in to the filler. This is actually just model making fiberglass. That's the stuff that you would strengthen airplane wings with, model airplane wings. Just want a bit of this infused with the filler, just to help it maybe plug the hole a bit. Just want a good load of that and then a little, little bit of hard. That's probably way too much, but oh well, we'll see how it goes. Stir it up real good. Fold it in on itself. Whilst this is making this just a little bit thicker. Ideally, I should be wearing some gloves. I just want to smear this on. I'm going to open the door so I avoid getting it all over the rest of the car. I've also added some tape just to give myself kind of like a. I really don't want to go any further than that with the paint. Just trying to keep the repairers as small as possible is the general thing and I've cleaned this down with some white spirit first just to try and uh, keep, make sure the air is as clean as possible it's quite nicely keyed in so I used quite rough sandpaper yesterday that was really tough stuff and this will fill this hole try and shove it in there at this stage it will look pretty rough So I'm only trying to basically fill that hole. I'm not too bothered about doing much else. I think that'll probably do for now. Give that some time just to set. It's been an hour or so and this thing seems to have flashed off all right. It's quite firm now. So I'm just gonna give it a quick sand with some 400 on a block to try and uh, fly it down a bit. Obviously, this still has quite a long way to go yet, so I'm just going to continue sanding. There's a bit more filling to do just here. But this bit's nice and smoothish. Let's get in there. A bit more work to do here, a bit more work to do down here as well. But, you know, there's not a crack in it anymore. It feels nice and firm, so good. A bit of a trick with these is you don't actually need to clean them off. You just wait till it's dried, and get, get it to crack, and then you can. Uh, just kind of scrape it off with a screwdriver like so when you get it clean again. Just a bit of work. Easier than trying to wipe it off. Mix up a brand new batch again, just a smear of it with a just a pea of hardener. You want something like that? I'm just gonna stir it up really well. Make sure the takeaway box lid is nicely mixed up. And this time I'm aiming for a slightly smoother finish if I can. Not too perfect, so I'm going to sand it. So. But you know, the less work I have to do afterwards, the better. I just want to fold it in nicely. So this stuff cures pretty quick. Maybe only waited maybe half an hour and it was pretty much ready for sanding. Depending on how thick you've applied it, obviously. Just shut the door just to see where I'm at. It's not perfect. Probably need another go, but it's getting somewhere. Right, after another fill in the sand, I think I'm kind of at the stage where it's not looking too bad. And I might think about spritzing on a bit of primer. Just that will really show me if it's actually anywhere close or not. 
straight away because the primer will just say yeah that's nowhere near or yeah that's pretty smooth obviously i not normally wouldn't look this closely at it because it's usually up i'm usually stood up there somewhere but it feels smooth and it looks pretty smooth so let's uh just clean it up and give it a quick with primer just to see what it looks like i don't want a hard line as such so i've got like a roll of paper here and i'm going to aim just to paint just this bit just giving it a quick test spray over there but i'm just going to give it a very light spritz and you see it's not gone very far up it's kind of blended up the wing up the arch shall i say it's not gone a long way up which is what i'm aiming for really i don't want it to go all the way up and i don't want a hard hard line either. Just aiming for a small coverage of primer. This sort of stage, I'm quite happy with this. It's actually not going too badly. It feels really quite smooth. And it's not the smoothest at the bottom. But it ain't bad. It's a bit of a divot there, maybe. But it's pretty good. It looks pretty smooth. And I think I might just go for a bit more primer. And maybe paint. A bit of a shake. And for the first coat, I'm going to do the most ridiculously light coats. Cleaned it off with some white spirit heated this can up for a little while just in some warm water and i'm going to put i'm not going too far up i don't want to go too mental and just uh mask around there just a very light of coat that's literally all i'm going to do for now very light coat. That's just to sort of key it in and let that flash off for a little while. And just the lightest of first coats. Difficult to see them too far away. Obviously it's just a little spritz so you can see the filler primer stuff underneath it. But it's relatively smooth, just obviously very patchy at the minute. Wait a few minutes for it to just go tacky. I'm just going to Spritz on a little bit more. Not forgetting down there. It's probably way too much, but it will give us something to cut into with some sandpaper. And obviously I'm not painted very far up here. I'm hoping to sort of blend, blend round into there. Don't look like a bad match colour-wise. Important thing to do once you've finished spraying is turn your can upside down and just clean the nozzle out. There you go. You can see when it goes clean, that means you've uh, cleared out all the paint and it's more likely to work tomorrow. That's the results so far. Not too bad to say it's just a light spritz of paint at this stage. I'm not not too disappointed with that so far. Obviously I've got clear coat to go as well and some more actual paint. So it's a few stages yet, but not too bad. So in between coats, I'm basically using just some uh, fine 1200 wet and dry sandpaper. I shouldn't really soak my cork block. You know, uh, fine wet and dry. I'm just cutting in between coats. Obviously I've cut through a little bit here and uh, so it's time just to apply a little bit more paint and see what it looks like in an hour or two. Okay, I've done a couple of coats with sandpaper in between and uh, now I'm happy with the paint. I think it looks okay. I'm gonna layer some lacquer on the top and I've got the uh, paper there just so it blends up a little. We're gonna have a bit of a line there, but there's a line in the bodywork anyway and hopefully by the time I've buffed it, it will look Okay, we'll find out.
Now I've got the first coast of lacquer on and I've got I've got some weird imperfection things like fish eyes, I guess. So I'm going to have to sand down again with a bit more wet and dry and uh, clean it again and then just have another go, I guess. So I'm pretty happy with that now. It's not too bad. It's certainly better than a hole. There's a slight tape line there, which when it's dried, I'm going to buff, buff this area out. And hopefully that line will kind of blend or disappear. But from, you know, a distance, I think that's perfectly acceptable. And it's certainly better than a big crack there. So it's hopefully going to keep the weather out somewhat. Wet sanded with very fine grit and then did a bit of a tea cut and a bit of a polish with uh, some uh, polishing cloths. So this is the point that I started at. This is what I had um, to work with. And obviously I chose this area first because as a practice, I don't know what I'm doing. It's somewhere that's low down. It's kind of inconspicuous and out of sight. And mainly I just want to stop the water getting underneath or any dirt or anything like that. I'm making things a lot worse. This is of course the afternoon. It's not perfect, but it is a massive improvement. I was never aiming for Pebble Beach, but maybe taking it to a Skeggy Beach. Sorry, Skegness, I chose you because you rhymed. And hopefully with shooting up some wax oil right into the inner and outer arch that should help protect stuff further back as well. Um, I'm not expecting obviously this repair to last forever. It's not new welded in metal um, and I, if I did use the car in the winter I would expect that it would probably come back within a few months but since it's dry weather only I'm hoping it will last a little while. Um, if there's any steps that you think I missed or anything I could have improved on in terms of how I could have done the repair, then please add in a comment because it will help me and maybe help a few others uh, doing similar repairs with the advice. But it's just this is just a video to show that someone with very little to no experience of doing bodywork can improve on a car and have quite a lot of fun doing it. It's a fun process. And I'd say the thing I learned is just to take your time with it. You can leave it and come back to it the next day. It's something that's fine. I have to do it all in one day. Anyway, if you enjoyed it, um, like and subscribe and uh, add any comments of anything I can improve, etc. Uh, thank you very much and thanks for watching.